Hey guys, I wanted to show you a workflow I've been using a lot to uh, create clean plates. Uh, you can even use it for things like uh, removing noise, uh, stuff like that. Pretty much if you want to remove anything that's not consistent through a shot, uh, this is a good way to do it. Uh, and I'm currently working on a tool which I'll briefly show you at the end of the video that'll kind of automate this whole thing. Uh, sort of resulting in a tool very similar to Mocha's remove feature. Um, basically just using the tracking information to realign an image and fill in your back, uh, you know, fill in any missing pixels. Anyway, I've got this footage here, which is just me walking on a path uh, in front of the camera. Camera moves a little, I'm moving, you know, very typical shot. Now, all I've done here is I have made an alpha channel for it, just a really, really loose roto to tell my uh, my gizmo what I want to remove. And it's just animated with me throughout the shot. Very, very not detailed. Now, the only thing, uh, well, the only thing this is really doing is it's uh, stabilizing the shot, blending frames, putting the motion back in, and then unpre-multiplying. So let me go through this. So we pre-multiply to get rid of everything that was in our roto, obviously. Then we use the tracker to stabilize the shot. And then a frame blend, which is basically going to give us a... Oh, let me look at it after the motion is put back in. Uh, it's basically going to give us a nice blurry black path of where it went, which is not immediately useful. And you can see once we hit the unpre it basically gets rid of all the transparency there that was in the alpha. Went from this to this. Um, but what's useful about this, uh, you can see from the original image that that did eat in slightly from what we originally had. Filled back in the, uh, the background a little, so we went from this to this. And now all we really have to do is bump up this frame blend number until I am completely gone. So now we're basically generating a backplate based on the motion of the shot and based on any color information that you ever see back there when I'm not over it. So if I up this enough, I can completely remove myself. And uh, there you go. There's about 75 frames had to be blended to create this. But it works really well. And the motion will match uh, and everything throughout the shot. If I go later in the shot, I'm not sure if this number will still be enough. It doesn't look like it is. Um, you can animate this number to sort of follow along your shot and you know only blend as many frames as you need to so as to not make nuke vomit on itself. Uh, but yeah, there you go. And now I am completely gone. So it's a pretty simple trick, but it uh, it works extremely well. Um, you can basically uh, I've I've used it to remove like a moray pattern on the back of someone's shirt that was picked up by a digital camera. Uh, basically just lock the motion to the back of their shirt with the first tracker, did a blend frame, put the motion back in, and you can tell the difference. They weren't moving a lot, so it worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, so that's really about it. Um, I've got this tool that I'm making here that'll do this for you. Um, pretty much just plug in your mat, uh, your source image, and then there's a tab here to plug in your tracking information. Uh, I'm currently making it uh, work with corner pin information as well, which means if you do a track in Mocha or use Nuke's planar tracker, uh, you'll be able to plug in that information and it'll do the exact same thing, just with the likely better track. Um, so anyway, in this gizmo here, all I've done is I've uh, connected up my tracker information and uh, just told it how many frames I want to blend here. Uh, it's got the option to invert the mat if you had it set up incorrectly to start with, and uh, typically it actually expects um, a white shape over what you want to remove, um, and I actually did that in reverse for my little demo there, so I just checked the invert mat thing here, uh, currently it is blending like 70 or so frames, and you can see it's basically generating that same thing. Uh, the nice thing about this is it gives you an alpha just for the area that's been patched, which is really just your source alpha. Um, but if, uh, if you're not totally removing something, I do have a couple different options for how you export the alpha from this guy. So let me drop this down a bit here. And 
Now this setup, obviously the better the track, the better the clean play to look. And it certainly does not deal well with uh, putting in a background where there's shifting perspective or things like that. It might work well enough. Uh, I did just use it on a shot similar to that, um, but we didn't have to fill in too much. Basically, you have to lock the tracking onto something, and if you're blending frames and something in the background's perspective is shifting as the camera moves, and it's just going to turn into a blurry mess, and only the object that you tracked will wind up actually looking good in the output. But um, in any case, you can see this does the exact same thing as the setup I just showed you. Uh, also give the option to um, control how you output your alpha. You can see right now it's only outputting the alpha for the area where we've actually generated uh, a patch. So this isn't the same as the inverted matte alpha anymore. Uh, now we're actually getting the, the whites in there. Uh, so you can do the full patch alpha, which will be everything but the area that we didn't manage to patch if uh, if there wasn't information somewhere. Matted patch alpha will take that same alpha, constrain it just to where your original mask was. And then we have the original matte alpha, which will just give you straight what you put in, and inverted matte alpha. So this is just a little useful, I guess. Um, and then you can choose to pre-multiply the output if you want, so you can just throw it straight into a merge and throw that on top of the original image. So there we go. That's what we're doing here. So it's just pre-multiplied and thrown on top. Cool. Yeah, so that's uh, that's really all of this. I'm gonna be throwing this online here shortly once I can once I can finish up the last little bit, uh, which is uh, throwing the tracking on there. Um, just to look in here real quick, this is where all the tracking information gets plugged in. Source, copying the alpha, pre -malt, um stabilize, do the frame blend, put the motion back in. This stuff's all choosing what sort of alpha output you want. Um, this is basically choosing if you want to put the original plate back over everywhere that isn't in the patch. Uh, which I didn't actually show you. You can you can choose either just export the frame blended background for everything out in this area, or you can have it sort of softly layer the plate back in, and you've got controls for um, how you want to blend that, so you can you know, erode out or in if you want, and uh, soften it a bit, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, so that's my tool. That's a uh, nifty little workflow that I hope hopefully help you guys out and then I'm also going to be putting up this actual tool if you want it to be extra easy uh, here shortly on Nukepedia so thanks for watching